Water-cooled PCs are a staple in the PC building industry. They represent a level of craftsmanship, artisanry, perfectionism that goes into making something truly special. The PCs that we've built here that are water-cooled for our customers, we've taken tens, if not thousands of hours to complete. And that's why today, we're water cooling a PlayStation 5. A couple of weeks back, I posted a short about this PlayStation 5 water block made by EK's Quantum Division. And honestly, I just thought that it was neat, but the video absolutely popped off. I broke down, found the specific model needed for the water block, and after more tequila than I care to admit, I bought that disgusting thing. We must push forward for science. So I talked to Chris, our in-house water cooling wizard, and I asked if he was up for the bill. And when I say wizard, I mean wizard. Chris has been creating insane custom PCs since he was a teenager. He's just a little kid. And not just the water cooling, I'm talking about this guy's created cases that are practically modern art pieces. The way that he can just piece together one of the best looking builds that I've ever seen is amazing. He's truly the Leonardo da Vinci of high-end custom PC builds. He's worked on projects with NVIDIA. AMD, Intel, and even game studios like Ubisoft and DICE. I have whole faith that Chris has this covered. Thanks, Zach, but I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing here. Now, obviously, I have extensive knowledge in PC water cooling. I mean, I do it on a daily basis here at Meta, but when it comes to this PS5, I have absolutely no idea what's going on. But EK over here with their Quantum X lineup, what I'm gonna call their Willy Wonka lineup of water cooling, they have found a way to water cool this. Now, we're gonna also be including some other hardware here to complete the system. We have a 240 radiator, pump res combo, fans, fittings, and even a desktop power supply to somehow convert this guy into normal PC hardware. And how to get into this, I have absolutely no idea. But EK has found a way, so I'll have to check into their manual and maybe we'll be able to figure it out. So let's get into this and let's get everything unboxed. Now we couldn't use just any enclosure for this build. We actually picked the X-Proto from I'll let you pronounce that one. And they have produced a very pretty open air enclosure here. Very nice white powder coat finish here going on in the case. Should be perfect to fit our PlayStation block around on this side and have plenty of space on the opposite for all of our water cooling and power supply needs. Keeping it as simple and compact as possible. There won't be any graphics cards, so we're not gonna include the extra brackets and stuff to be added onto it just to keep it as sleek and as simple as possible. And it's time now that we have this beautiful case assembled now, it is time to tear apart this PlayStation 5. I don't like where this is going. I did check out the EK instruction video, so I feel a little more, more confident going into this, but still, anything could happen here. Thanks Zach for donating your PlayStation, but she a little dusty. Look what we have here, another one of Zach's little friends. And we've got the disk drive out, but this thing is incredibly ugly. We don't need that. All right, now I've watched back the video a couple times now. I feel a little more confident, but this is make or break for the PlayStation. So let's see if we can get this removed here. Pry up on this corner just a little bit. There we go. And it is free. Not much to see there yet. All right, so now that we've got the cooler removed, we can take a look at this real quick. Very reminiscent to a PC air cooler here. We got a few heat pipes going into a heat sink. Um, basically, this fan is just moving air around it just to try and take that heat away from the actual cooler here. On the PCB here, this is about as torn down as it gets for the PlayStation 5. We see our main chip here, um, sort of an APU of sorts because it's the CPU and GPU doing both tasks. On the backside here, I'm assuming this is your memory. We'll get all that cleaned off, I'm sure, for the water block here. Very interesting, they used liquid metal on here. Um, they had to even put a little reservoir around it because same thing with liquid metal on desktop CPUs. If you get any of that onto your main PCB, um, it'll basically erode all of the soldering that's on here. So it can remove any of these capacitors and little solder points around the board. You definitely don't want happening. And now that we've got the PS5 all torn apart, it's time to get into my favorite part of this project and that is the PS5 water block from EK from their Quantum X lineup here. And just look at that. Absolutely beautiful. 
So now we have the EK water block taken apart here and we've installed the two antennas from the PlayStation 5. And then over here, we will be installing thermal pads and thermal compounds, very similar to like a GPU water block or CPU water block install. And so we'll get right into that. And we are back with day two of the water-cooled PS5 build here. Now I've had a little bit of time off camera to just add a few little painted accents here. We have the metal bracket that is holding the water-blocked PS5 here. We also have a couple accents like this pump res combo from EK. Uh, I've taken it apart, added some white painted accents here on the side frame, as well as swapping out some screws for silver ones and a silver housing on the back. Then lastly, we have some extra little goodies. We have this Lee & Lee SFX power supply, all in white. Very, very pretty white fan, white cables, even the white connectors on it. Some of you might notice we have two 8-pin PCIe cables going into the PlayStation of all things. So EK did actually redo the power source for this so that it's able to run off of just a simple 8-pin to your power supply. So we just run this one cable around to the back. And lastly, we have a couple other additions like this water channel doodad here. We can possibly put this over at the bottom here, up at the top, whatever looks really cool. But that basically gets us into the tubing where I just have a couple of bends to make, a couple of tubes to cut, and ideally we can get this wrapped up and we can get Zach's reaction of this abomination. <laughs> Chris has the build ready. Let's go check that out. How we looking? Is this thing done? Do you think God stays in heaven because he's scared of what he's created? What the fuck? So according to Chris, apparently this build is done and ready to go. Chris, whenever you're ready, I'd love to see it. Let's get into it. Ready? Three, two, one. Let's see it. This is a PlayStation 5 that is completely water-cooled. And this, you have a mini distro here. I mean, dude, walk me through this build. This is nuts. Lots of crazy things going on here. Obviously, the forefront here, we've got EK and their Quantum X lineup making a water block for a PlayStation. Of all things, we're out of the world of PC water cooling onto anything else that produces heat. Slap a water block on it and we're good to go. We have a front little distro cube tube going on just to give this kind of front angle a unique kind of art form to it. The back, of course, lots of more EK water cooling goodies there with a the pump res combo irradiator. Dude, the, like the details on this too, like I'm just soaking it all in. This, I know does not come with this case. I don't know, shroud or something like that. Like what is Pretty this? much, yeah. So there's already so few cables in this build because we're just running off these eight pin PCIe cables that we just put a little piece of acrylic here, painted it white, and that pretty much conceals most of all of the wires you end up seeing otherwise. Beautiful. And these Be Quiet fans, I actually really like the way these look. They look fantastic. Yeah, this the build. RGB on it looks awesome. And I want to remind people, okay, so you're seeing all the detail in this, right? You've essentially taken a $500 console and you've turned it into $3,000. And just so people know, the benefit of this is just massive. It's, oh, like it's much it's faster, huge. right? It's massive. It's not, no, it's not. And there's literally, there's no performance benefit to doing this. The aesthetics, mm -hmm. beautiful, uh, that's it. Yeah, no, we're just here to kill it in the aesthetics department. I mean, at this point, this is art. We're past the PlayStation. You can't put a price tag on art. Mm. I mean, you can, it's, it's about $3,000. Absolutely beautiful job with this build, man. I mean, tell people how long did it take to do this? This has been about a week or so in the making. Uh, it definitely kind of tricky disassembling a PlayStation, making sure you're not messing up any of the PCB um, or any of the components of it in the process. Beautiful job. Feels nah. dirty to call it a console. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, this is, uh, I want this as a showpiece. We've PCified a console. We made it. Cool. We brought it into our world of things. Gosh, it feels good, doesn't it? Great <laughs> it does. job, dude. Awesome build, I love it. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for watching, but before we go, I wanna try to get a little bit of info out of Chris because we do a lot of these really cool builds. Chris, 
Can you give people a little insight on what's coming next in the next video? There might just be a $15,000 wall mount PC that we're working on. It'll be very cool coming here soon. What? Make sure you're subscribed for that. Hit the like button. Leave a comment if you'd like to see something on the channel. Let us know. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.